BBC Radio Stoke. Uh, there's lots of heritage sites around here. Over the weekend, it was announced a £300,000 grant would go to the Wedgwood Institute in Burslem to try and bring that back to life. Uh, I don't want to appear ungrateful, but I suspect you need another zero at the end of that to bring the Wedgwood Institute back to life. It is a stunningly beautiful building. It's been neglected for some years. Work will start in the summer, be completed by the end of this year. Historic England claims the closer you live to a heritage site, the happier you're likely to be. And according to one study, Stoke-on-Trent is a happier place because there are so many heritage buildings in a small area. Really? I mean, I don't want to put a downer on you on a Tuesday morning, but I reckon if you went and asked people in Stoke how they feel, they'd say there's too many heritage sites that nobody seems to care about. The Leopard in Burslem springs to mind as one. Uh, there's too many falling into disrepair. And actually, if there were heritage sites we could put some money into, we'd be really proud of them. Um, but maybe that's just me. Jenna Goodwin may have a much more positive take on this. Jenna runs the Red Head Stokey History Podcast and is usually upbeat about such matters. Morning, Jenna. Morning, Stuart. You're right. I don't know. Am I just being a miserable old curmudgeon on this? Yeah, sorry to say it. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Uh, w- what kind of things should we be celebrating more than rather than me whinge about? A couple of things, really. One is I think we're really lucky in Stoke to have as much survive as it has because, you know, when you've just been saying about things like the leopard and things like that that aren't looked after, it's not because the general public don't love them. We just have absolutely no control over what happens to them. Um, And I think one of the things in Stoke is I've spoken to people from all over the country, obviously being interested in history and things. I think the only other place in the country where people love the history as much as we do is London. And that's only local local people. But people in Stoke-on-Trent love our history and love our heritage, probably more than any other town and city in the country. But it's not us that have neglected things. All the history and heritage sites that are running, the museums, Middleport Pottery, places like that, are literally ram-packed every single weekend, every single bank holiday. Places like the Leopard, that it's owned by a private developer. It's not even anything to do with the council. So things like that, unfortunately, we love them. Everybody in Stoke-on-Trent loved the Leopard. Everybody in Burslem adored the Leopard, and that's why people are so angry. But we have no control. And we definitely do love our history and heritage in Stoke-on-Trent. And I do think it makes everywhere a better place when it's looked after, like you say. It's interesting you say that because um, I've lived in various parts of the country and um, I, I, sus- I suspect you're right in terms of the history and heritage. Um, and um, uh, it is unique as well. And I think that's, that, you know, we've got six, seven arguably town halls in the city. Uh, no other city can claim that, I don't think. Um, but but also, you know, the, the history of, of bottle kilns and uh, the history of uh, um, the potteries is unique to Stoke-on-Trent. You know, there, there are places you go to Derby, they'll claim that, yeah, we've had potters here for years. Uh, you go to other parts of the country, they'll claim we've had potters here for years, but nothing like we've got. Well, it's not just that they've had potters. It's that I think it's really important that, I mean, the one, the one really important thing about history is that you learn where you've come from. We learn how Stoke-on-Trent became Stoke-on-Trent. We learned about how pottery started with the Romans, right up to making butter pots and then right up to the artistic creation of the last couple hundred years. There is no other town and city that can boast that. We, we can show you how things were made. We've got remnants of Roman bottle kil- Roman kilns, sorry, right up to modern day kilns and how it's progressed over the last 2,000 years. And the other thing on top of that is we still have businesses doing the same. So in the last 2,000 years of the ceramics industry, we're still doing it. We haven't lost it. It's not like Sheffield, where they had the steel industry and it's gone, or Liverpool, where they have the shipping industry and it's gone. Our ceramics industry hasn't gone. It's still there. We still have tons and tons of pottery makers from huge ones like, you know, Burley Pottery at Middleport, right down to small little artisan ones that are doing it in their back bedroom with a tiny little kiln that they bought off Amazon. This is, we haven't lost anything. And when you walk around and you see the bottle kilns dominating the skyline, you know, the sunset behind them. This is what makes people happy. Unfortunately, a lot of these places aren't being looked after, but 
with the last 20 years in Stoke-on-Trent, I think things are on the up now. More private owners from the local area are purchasing these uh, these buildings and starting to do them up and give them new uses. And the council are taking more control of the local buildings. We're getting more investment from outside, like the one for Wedgwood. You said it's going to take more to turn Wedgwood back into a, normal, a good use building. And that's true. But this one is going to make it structurally sound and going to fix it and stop the damp, which is going to then make it more affordable and make maybe an external investor or something like that come in and spend more money on it and turn it into a thriving business again. But no one's going to buy a derelict building. They'll just want to knock it down. So if we get the grants in to repair them and make them usable again, then we're going to get people who want to use them, aren't we? Just give me a minute, Jenna. I'm putting on my tin hat before I put this to you. Uh, is it you, you say that Stoke's got so much of its heritage still? Is that because we failed to progress over the no. last forty years? No, definitely not. If you go down and walk through Festival Park, you can see how far we've progressed in the last forty years. Because forty years ago, that was Shelton Park. It was a massive steel works and the canal and all that sort of stuff. And we've managed to keep all of the history and heritage down there, but replace it with steel. Shelton Bar is completely gone. And then we've replaced it with factories, storage units, work. How many thousands of people are employed just on the Festival Park area? There's shopping units, there's manufactories, there's the A500, the train line, the canal. We've got the best transport probably in the whole of the country. We're right in the centre. We are ripe for business. And I think now, over the last 20 years, no, we didn't progress, but it's, it's beginning now. It's over the last five, six years in Stoke. We've had the new road built through Festival Park, and I think it's all coming to life now. Is it sad that I got a bit excited driving over that new bridge? <laughs> no, because it's progress. I didn't need to go that way. I just went because I like seeing what's changed. I yeah, think but did you see sad. what has changed down there? Oh, did yeah. you see your, your buildings and offices? And oh, all yes. the, every single one of them has got a business in. There's, there's not really any empty down there. As soon as one is built and up for sale, it's filled because people want to be here now. How difficult is it when you hear criticism of Stoke, which is e easy to do uh, for some of the reasons you've just cited. It's quite easy to, to point fingers and say, well, this isn't happening, that's not happening. Uh, we've got this heritage that hasn't, in many cases, been well looked after. How does that feel, given that you are a Stokey and you're really proud of it? I agree with a lot of the criticism of Stoke, but it's not the Stoke of today. And I think that's what we need to remember. It's like when people complain about the mines shutting and Thatcher, it's like, yeah, that was a long time ago and it's totally different now. It did affect everybody and it was awful. And like the last 20 years that we've had fighting with the council who've wasted money on things like Etruscan Square and City Central and all that rubbish. But that's stopped now, that's gone. We need to stop bringing that up and looking at it as a negative. The new council is trying their hardest to fix the issues from the previous council. And the history and heritage in the local area has got a better chance today than it has ever had in the past. We've got more listed buildings. There's more protections being put in. And I think not just with the local council being on side with a lot of these heritage buildings, but we've also got a lot of private investors that are happy. I mean, we've got local companies that are buying up heritage sites to redo them. To put them to a new purpose, they're never, never going to be pottery factories again, but they can be flats and apartments and offices. And that's great because I would rather a local company buy them and do them up and give them a reuse and that money go back into the local economy, which then rebuilds the economy in Stoke-on-Trent. And that's what's happening now. There's a lot of external investors as well. A lot of people from London are buying up buildings and doing them up as well because, you know, look at Hanley. We've got the Hilton Hotel and things like that. And... They don't build things like that for no reason. They've built them because they know what's coming. People say, why is there a Hilton Hotel in Hanley? There's nothing there. Yes, there's nothing there yet. They preempt these things because the land's cheap. They can build a hotel. They can build a car park for pennies. And then in 10 years' time, when the boom happens, they're already there making the money. And you've got to lead. These people lead. They know how it works. And this is the thing with our heritage buildings. The ones that are in existence now, that are museums and business cities, are absolutely thriving. And then other ones are coming up. But I don't think I think we need to stop being afraid of giving them new purposes and demolishing the bits that need demolishing and recycling the bits that need recycling and saving the parts that need saving and modernise them. 
We'll see what listeners think. Jenna, it's always great talking to you. Thanks very much for coming on to BBC Radio Stoke. If you want to find out more about what Jenna does, she goes around places, explains what's going on, finds out what's going on. Have a look for the Redhead Stokey podcast. Brilliant on local history. Well worth finding out. 0800 121 80 80. Uh, your feelings on it. £300,000 awarded to the Wedgwood Institute in Burslem, which uh, would be in my top five. If I had, if I had a top five favourite buildings in Stoke on Trent, the Wedgwood Institute would be um, very much in there. It's a fabulous building. Or more specifically, it could be. And it was. And therein lies the problem, in a sense. Jen is very positive about it all. You may get the sense that I'm less positive about it all. I've been here long enough uh, to have heard, oh, in 10 years' time, this will be booming, this will be happening, this will be thriving. Uh, a couple of points on Festival Park coming in from listeners since it got a mention there. Um, half the shopping units are empty, aren't they? Um, I don't think they are. I was at Festival Park last week. I did notice some of the potholes on the car park were incredible. I thought they were building a lake at one point. It's huge. Privately owned, of course. Not the council's problem. Privately owned car parks really should com complain to the landlords. Um, stop talking about past failures. There's loads of current ones you could be mentioning. Uh, Levelling up broken promises, white elephant car parks, and so on. Uh, just a thought, having had that conversation with Jenna about heritage, have you been watching this town on BBC One? Um, I watched it to see where I recognised. And this is where it sort of ties in with the whole heritage thing. Uh, bits were filmed in Stoke recently, like in the last 12 months. Presumably because the Ginnells and the back alleys of, of parts of Stoke filmed just off Campbell Road and a couple of other places too. Burslem's in there, I definitely spotted that. Um, looks like Birmingham in 1981. Now, on one hand, you, you can take Jenna's path on this. Uh, that's brilliant. Look at our heritage. Look at what we've kept. Uh, many of the old uh, ginnels now have gates at the end of them so they can lock them off so people aren't dumping rubbish, etc. down them. This has been a problem in the past. Um, this town started on Easter Sunday. There was another one last night. It's a six-parter. All six are on iPlayer at the moment. 